couch Dogs need the lessons Hey there Lickin' Riffers! Welcome back to yet another awesome guitar lesson here on Lickin' Riff in which we're gonna kick off the 12 string series. I'm gonna help you unlock and harness the power of the 12 string guitar. Just look how beautiful this is. The, the head of a 12 string guitar is just, just majestic, isn't it? So the dogs uh, won't be joining the 12 string lessons because it's a huge guitar and they're a little bit scared of it. So um, it's just gonna be me and you. Uh, well, technically it's just gonna be me talking to a camera, but you know what I mean. All right, so let's start with the misconception about a 12 string. Um, the biggest misconception about 12 string is that you play it like a regular guitar. Um, and you don't, you don't play, okay? It sounds, it sounds nice, okay, to play it and get that extra layer there, that natural chorus there. Actually, you, uh, you get m the most out of a 12 string when you play it um, as single notes or finger style. So we're gonna learn finger style 12 string guitar and um, what I want you to remember is that with a 12 string, it's all about the sound. It's all about the sound, and I'm gonna do my absolute best to help you achieve any sound you wanna achieve out of this guitar. Now, in this first lesson, we're gonna discuss the standard tuning, okay? Which is uh, probably the worst tuning to play a 12 string in, but I'm gonna help you explore the standard tuning uh, on a 12 string guitar. We're gonna start in a second and then in the next lessons uh, throughout the series of 12 string guitar lessons, we're gonna change tunings, we're gonna try slide guitar on a 12 string, we're gonna explore sounds, and uh, we're gonna also explore weird tunings. So, enough talking, let's start playing. Put an F chord on, okay, but open the second string and the first string so you only have two and three on strings three and four, okay? I'm gonna still refer to the strings as single strings, otherwise we're all gonna go absolutely insane here. So, okay, you get this, okay? Two on the third and three on the fourth. Okay, now if you play it, if you break it down, and the idea here is randomness, complete randomness, just play any of the first four strings, and you'll notice something interesting. Okay, the focus is no longer on the first strings. It's no longer on strings one and two as it is with a regular sixth string. The focus turns to strings four to six because of the of the double sound, of the octave sound, okay? So it's the same with chords, okay? Your focus is gonna turn to the bass notes of each chord you're playing, okay? Strings four to six. And with, uh, with this open F chord, uh, which is uh, F major seven flat five, uh, if you wanna know, You're gonna start to focus on strings three and four, which is why I wanted you to start with this chord. Okay, we're gonna try different chords. Okay, strings one and two are double strings, but they still sound like the same string. It's a unison, it's the same sound. Okay, now um, the 12 string produces such an interesting sound that you don't actually have to do anything complicated in order to produce it. I'm not doing anything complicated. I'm just playing random notes. Strings one, two, three, and four, I'm playing random notes. And I'm trying to play an open first or second string after a bass string. For example, if I play the fourth, I will play the first or the second afterwards, okay? Same as the third. Okay, I'm playing strings 3-1 or 3-2, okay? And what I'm trying to do is to create interesting combinations. I'm exploring. The 12th string is all about exploration. Okay? 
I was just playing strings, let's see, three, one, two, four, two, three, one, something like this. But when you do it quick enough, it starts to sound crazy. And you can break rhythm apart here because the sound is so interesting. Now we're just we're just starting out, and of course you can strum the chord every now and then. But the idea here is to create a little bit of a solo on the bass string, so you can do zero two on the third, and you get that harpsichord sound. Okay, you can do the same thing on the third, on the on the fourth uh, string. You can do three, four. Sorry, two, three. <sighs> Just getting started, and it's too many numbers. Okay, and and if you notice, after each little lick that I play on the bass strings. I play an open string. I play strings one or two or one and two. Okay? Let's change a chord. Okay? Take this, what you're playing, down one fret. So it's E. But we're not going to play it as E. We're going to play it as A major 7. So we're going to play the fifth string with it. Surprising, right? You didn't expect that sound. You, you can just play this and it would sound amazing. And again, my secret, secret, it's not really a secret, is I'm playing strings one and two in between bass licks. Sometimes I pick both of them, strings one and two. I brush my finger on it. Sometimes I strum with my thumb. And if you want to, if you want to add an extra note, you can play two on the first string. But because of those octaves on the bass strings, you go haywire. Your ear can't tell what's going on, and that's the beauty of it. You're completely outside your comfort zone. Okay, I'm pulling off and hammering on on the E string, just two and zero. Okay, just two and zero. could play this all day. But let's move this to E. Okay, I took the same, I took, I took this, 2, 0, 1, 2 on strings 1 to 4. I took this to 9, so now it's 9, 0, 8, 9, and you can still play this with A. You can take this to seven, so it's seven zero six seven. You can take this to three again for F. And then back down again. Okay, 
now you can also use thirds on strings three and four. Now, I I would refrain from creating um, predictable sounds. Okay, the whole idea here is to create unpredictable sound. So you can do on strings three and four. You can do t one and two. Okay, one and two, two and four, four and six. Okay, six and seven, which you just played, and eight and nine, which you just played, and just play around with that. Okay, try to add slides, quick slides. To create a sitar sound of sound. Mm. Okay, to, to just move between the notes. do E minor add 9. Any rich chord would work. E minor add 9 is 2 and 4 on strings 5 and 4. Okay, you can you can slide it up to 5 and 7. If you don't like it, try 7 and 5. But again, the idea here is to create weird sounds. So I would slide it to four and six. And nine and 11 works as well. But as I said, the standard tuning is a little bit confining. Okay, you might think that this is a lot, but this is really confining. It's the same sound all the time. So you really need to open your tunings. Okay, but before we finish the standard tuning 12 string lesson, this first in the series, I want to give you one more idea. Just solo, just solo on the bass strings, just solo. It's majestic. Doesn't have to make san, uh, sense. Go. Don't think about. Don't worry about technique. Be completely random. Surprise yourself. right where I started but now it's not F now it's D minor because that's what we're hearing in our head in our ear so music is funny that way 
You see, I, I did not plan it. I was just being random and then somehow it became D minor and I landed on two and three on strings three and four again. So allow yourself to be surprised, allow yourself to explore and I will see you the next uh, lesson and on the next 12 string lesson uh, we're gonna really 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 start exploring so thank you very much for watching subscribe to the channel if you haven't already there are hundreds literally hundreds of free lessons for your free guitar education thanks for watching enjoy bye for now